Hello and welcome to Leeds United's look back at the championship winning season of 1991-92. On the eve of the Premier League, to be crowned champions of Division 1 was then the pinnacle of the English game. This was a season that saw new faces at Ellen Road. It's a hit in low and Wallace comes for it, it's in the net! And Leeds have got their second and Rod Wallace has got his first league goal for Leeds United. Hodge in the wall, it's Dorigo, has it? Oh my word, what a goal that was! It's coming to the near post, Grobble are up, Dorigo here. The scorer in the last home game has come through, and Leeds have got the lead through Steve Hodge. But also a season which saw well-known stars shine again. Leeds looking to turn the screw again here, McAllister drives it in, and under the body of Crossley. Still in, what a hit! Long, in goes McAllister, here's Lee Chapman, and it's 2-2. Dangerous, turned in by Chapman. Speed, first time towards Chapman. Oh, a magnificent goal by Lee Chapman. There were bizarre games. Wallace, was he brought down? as well as a sprinkling of Gallic flair. McAllister comes into it, he's going through, McAllister might score, Cantona must surely, yes! Vive la France! And some amazing performances. Still time for a final flourish, perhaps, from Leeds United. Sterling, Chapman in a good position on the far post, there he is! It was the season when Leeds United finally celebrated being champions once again. Leeds had been in trouble, languishing in the old second division and living in the shadow of former title triumphs 1969 and 1974 under the guidance of the legendary Reavy. The club needed direction but was on the rise again. Since the appointment in October 1988 of Howard Wilkinson, promotion had been achieved as champions in 1990 and in the first season back in the top flight, a fourth place finish was highly creditable. We actually said, had planned that this is going to take time to, to get back on the road, but because of the potential there, it, we can get it back on the road and, and we, we're going to you know, aim for the stars. Investment had again been made, building on the current squad. Howard Wilkinson brought in the likes of Tony Dorigo, Rod Wallace and Steve Hodge. Wilkinson was a true innovator and was the first really to recognise the value of a whole squad system. We'd got six new players on board, uh, and, you know, I hadn't signed the new players to not make a difference. They'd been signed to make a difference. And so, again, um, tried to be realistic, tried to be conservative, and uh, what we decided was that, that we wanted to finish better than fourth. Not better than fourth, actually, to be more accurate, with more points than. So, you know, we've got we to be better than what we were the season before. Uh, you know, and I would, when I would sign me, he said we were going, he were going to win the league. I didn't realise he was going to win two, uh, you know, because we won the old second division. And like you said, uh, the old first division, which were unbelievable. And he said he was going to fetch players in who could play at this level, who he trusted, and uh, who wanted to play for Leeds United Football Club. It seemed a long way from, from London. Um, you know, let's go and talk to Howard Wilkinson and see if he can sell it to me. And uh, he did. As far as I was concerned, I, I, I'd got a very good team at the end of the season before, and now we had a better team, or we had a potentially a better team. You start getting one or two signings, and then suddenly the, the team starts bubbling, and you can see it in, in training that you know, there's something special going on here, but there's still, you know, it's a very difficult long season. So we were hopeful of doing well, but we didn't really think we were going to win the title, no. You can never imagine to be fair, you're going to go out and win the league, being your second year in the first division. 
you know, you don't go out thinking, we're going to win the league now. But we just thought if we're there or thereabouts, anything can happen. The genius of Wilkinson was in the blending of youth and experience, and the midfield was an absolute example of the model. The experience was provided by the likes of Gary McAllister and the inspirational captain Gordon Strachan, and that was allied to the youthful exuberance of the likes of Gary Speed and David Batty. That midfield, McAllister, Strachan, Batty and Speed, it give you most things. You, know, you had the talent, you had the creativity, you had the strength. You had the athleticism. By any standards, it was a fantastic midfield um, because they all had outstanding qualities um, in addition to just being generally good at the job. Um, and it was a great blend, great blend. So, and it was a very flexible midfield. Gary Speed would sometimes start wide. Uh, he would some, sometimes start tucked in. Uh, if he started tucked in, he knew when to get wide. Um, David Batty was what they'd now call an anchor man. Sat there in front of the two centre backs, uh, almost like a hoover. David Batty was a different class, absolute different class. Uh, he put his foot in, he loved a tattle. It, 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 no, nothing, nothing worried him. He seemed to smell where, where danger was. So if the centre halves went up and they got beat, and the other centre half had got pulled out, he'd be there picking up the ball that might have been uh, a problem to you. At the start of a game, you, you know, when you need to set the tone at Ellen Road, uh, a batty tackle, you know, winning that ball, and then people say to me, well, he only could pass sidewards, but well, he won the ball back and then gave it to people. It was their job, you know, Gary McAllister or Gary Speed, to do the next bit of it. You know, we all had our individual jobs, but a lot of the time it was started from, from David Batty, but he was a, a quiet, quiet sort, but uh, tough, as, tough as nails. When we used to go training on the, on, the, on the training park, we used to have a stretch and, you know, do his hamstrings, and Batty used to just be whacking balls 25, 30 yards without warming up. And me and Strachan and, and obviously all the pros used to go, how does he do it? You know, never having any injury, injuries or anything. But uh, yeah, he were good in that midfield. He used to get in among them and, you know, he used to break things down and they were different class. Gary McAllister had an exceptional range of passes and touch and vision. Um, Gary Speed was fantastic in both boxes. Fantastic. And professional enough to do a job, you know, wherever he was asked to go. And they could all play. Uh, uh, Gary could, could get a goal, he was fantastic in the air, brave. Speedy used to say to me, Mel, you know where I am at the back post. And he used to say, Speedy, I used to make him 10 goals, 12 goals a season. And uh, I used to put the ball in the box and I know Speedy, Chapman, they'd be there to put the ball in the net. Absolutely superb. And then obviously you got your strackens. Gordon was just the, the modern idea of a wide player. He'd come in off the line, get the ball in the hole where, you know, which is now commonplace. So from our point of view, we were very difficult to read. At Liverpool, they had McManaman that was a free spirit. The John Barnes was a free spirit, could go and influence different parts of the game and the rest of the team played a certain structure. So Gordon was probably that player that was allowed to go and roam and, and, and influence aspects. The players knew if they'd not perform well, Strachan was there to give him a kick up backside and say, come on, we're in it together, let's go out and perform. Manchester United will argue different, but I think take the four of them against any four in the league at the time and they were the best. The Leeds board naturally expected results though. Wilkinson had invested £10.4 million pounds on 26 players, including £1.6 million on Rod Wallace of Southampton. The thing I liked about, about Rod was that he, could, he had the pace off the ball to get in behind people. But on the ball, if he picked it up, he only had one thought in his mind, and that was attacking people. And they are invaluable. If somebody picks the ball up, and goes at you. You've got a problem if, they, if they're half decent at it. And he was good at it. You have a problem. Because immediately you're on the back foot. You get somebody who stops it, knocks it, stops it, knocks it. That's difficult to deal with. 
But in addition to that, someone who picks it up and his first thought is, can I run forward? Can I dribble forward with this ball? Uh, that's a problem, particularly if, if they're decent at, at selecting when to do it. Rod Wallace joined Lee Chapman in attack. Chapman, a player who'd already become a prolific scorer for the club. The way we played, we needed a focal point. We needed someone who could get, get goals. And his, his goals per chance ratio was very good. Chappie held the ball up so well. I mean, when I go down the left-hand side, I knew I just had to put it into a certain area at the back post. And he would rise and be there. You know, uh, he was just a, a very good finisher, all-round player. And okay. He couldn't strike the ball from 25 yards. Thankfully, he had other people to do that, but we couldn't do half the things that he could do. So, uh, yeah, he was, he was tremendous. Not many people realise this, but he was an unbelievable asset on defending set pieces. Corner kicks, free kicks knocked into the box, long throws. Chappie was a great and reliable and trustworthy asset. With probably the best midfield in the league and a proven strike force, Leeds United also had one of the most formidable defences in the entire league. And Chrissy Fairclough were unbelievable. Uh, great kid. Uh, obviously, me at right back, Luke. They were Chris White at centre half. Um, Tommy were up to left back. We had, we had a great defence. In Lukic, I always knew exactly what he was going to do, how he was going to do it, and that gave me so much confidence then. But the same with our, our two centre halves. I knew they weren't going to come out and, you know, beat ten people and hit it with the outside of the right boot. But I also knew that they would be there, you know, 90th minute. They're there throwing their body in the line, making that challenge. And in the end, it, it become so important that not only would we not concede, but would we not have the ball passed in between us. And we were all working together. And uh, it was it's lovely, a, a great feeling when you you work like that. And even when you're three 0 up. I still don't want to concede a goal. We didn't want to concede you know, any sort of goals. We say we had a good defence, but you know, you look at the forwards and, and, and we always say defend from the front. And we put teams under pressure. Uh, they didn't like it. Uh, we, stopped, we stopped them playing. And then obviously our quality come out then and, uh, and that's, that's how we won the games. Wilkinson had assembled his squad with a particular and straightforward vision in mind. Teams that had done well had got squads that could support the... the the continuance of performance if you had injuries. So basically it was to try to ensure that one, we had more players available uh, to select from and two, we had more better players in terms of the overall strength of the squad. Leeds began the season as fourth favourites behind Liverpool, Arsenal and Manchester United. They were due to go to Crystal Palace on the opening day of the season, but redevelopment work was taking place at Selhurst Park and with just three days to go, the match was postponed. My aim always was to go into the last week prior to the first game with, if possible, everybody fit, injury free if possible, and secondly, everybody as ready as they could be physically and mentally and collectively in terms of our organisation for the season, uh, the kickoff, and to find yourself not playing was for me frustrating. Yeah, obviously disappointing that, but to, you know we we were professional people. Um, I wouldn't let it to let us down, or he, he just used to go out and just you know concentrate on what we had to do. Obviously, we'd worked on certain things for that game, but um, with the, we, with the work being happening at the the, the stadium. There's not much you could do. In those days, you know, in the main, uh, you played on Saturday. And certainly the first game of the season was Saturday. So we had built up for that. And, you know, the, the, w what made it more frustrating was not being told. So the campaign kicked off without them. Leeds still needed practice, so they arranged a friendly game against Aldershot. When the season for real did kick off, they were due to face Nottingham Forest and Wilkinson had almost a full strength to choose from, with one exception, Mel Sterland. I don't think I was ready to play um, and obviously I would know because I worked with him at Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, he knew at the time uh, when I was fit he'd play me and it took a couple of, a couple of games before I, I got myself ready and, and got myself fit. Okay, uh, I think I missed a bit of a pre-season. Once you've missed pre-season then it's difficult. For the opening game, Wilkinson gave first starts to Tony Dorigo and Rod Wallace. Steve Hodge was on the bench. 
Over 29,000 were at Ellen Road and a host of familiar names got the season off to a winning start. David Batty found the head of Lee Chapman, he nodded it down into the path of Gary McAllister to power the ball under Mark Crossley. This had been a solid but not convincing display, though there were good early signs in the Chapman-Wallace partnership. Wilkinson was obviously pleased to be off to a winning start, though he had thought the team looked a little bit rusty. Nonetheless, it was a strong team performance. Strachan had been inspirational, and the Man of the Match award went on his first start to Tony DiRigo. But Wilkinson had already imposed his managerial style on the Australian. There was a, a chance for Nottingham Forest in the first half, and I was trying to actually cover the centre half, but it went out to my winger, and he had a bit more space. Uh, but then I obviously went down and, and challenged him and everything was fine. But at half-time, Howard Wilkinson brought this up. He says, why were you so far tucked in? Well, I tried to explain why I was tucked in. I was helping my centre-half, you know. And he kind of shot me out the ground, you know. He, he told me what for. I thought, right, OK, that's fine. But he did that with anyone, you know. Whatever he thought, that was it. The following Saturday brought a home derby game against Sheffield Wednesday, the first meeting of the Yorkshire rivals in the top flight for 22 years. There were also added ingredients. Howard Wilkinson facing his old club, who also included a former Leeds favourite in John Sheridan. Strachan, a good incisive ball as well to Wallace that time. Edge of the area, free kick is given by Mr Trussell. One by Rod Wallace. Speed and Strachan at the forefront. McAllister and Dorigo are there as well. He's taking some working out, and now McAllister whacks it in, and it sliced inches over the Sheffield Wednesday crossbar. But it was beautifully struck by the Scottish international. Just see how close this one is to the opener. And Leeds certainly have got more forward from midfield. And it's one of those midfielders, Batty, who finds Wallace this time. He tries to get away from Warhurst. There's the cross, it's a difficult one, and Chapman coming in at the far post just couldn't control it or direct it towards the Sheffield Wednesday net. But he appreciated the service from Rod Wallace. Really skillful player this from the England under-21 international. Gets the better of Warhurst, loops it in. It could even have gone over Woods into the net. Chapman just couldn't turn it in. Coming up to half an hour gone, and it's still nil-nil. Chapman, it came off him. Gary Speed, palmed away spectacularly by Chris Woods. Leeds are still here, however, with White. And that surely will get all the way through for the England goalkeeper, Chris Woods who certainly repaid one of the instalments on his transfer fee then. Chapman's touch, and there is a brilliant piece of goalkeeping. Forward here for Wallace to sprint onto it. Leads with three men in the box, it's cut back, and Warhurst is the first man to respond and bring it away safely. Oh, and he's done really well, and he's led the charge out superbly well, and he's found Hurst here. Good chance here for David Hurst, left foot scores! And David Hurst sends the Wednesday fans into ecstasy. And just as he struck three minutes into the match last week at Hillsborough, Hurst has struck again three minutes into the second half at Ellen Road, taking it on his right foot, eluding Fairclough, switching to the left, and beating Lukic, all ends up. Warhurst's run made the initial inroads. What a good ball it was for Hurst as well. On he goes past Fairclough, and that famed left foot does the trick. Sheffield Wednesday 1 leads nil. Chapman has done well, and McAllister! Superb shot, and a great response from Chris Woods. Anxious looks on the faces of Leeds fans. And I think that Leeds might be making a substitution very shortly as Chapman gets in. Wallace is penalised for the shove in the back of Palmer. And Leeds will indeed bring on Mel Sterland in place of Gary Speed. And John McClellan is going off to, to, 
to be replaced. Steve Hodge coming on, so effectively it's Sterling for McClelland at right back, and Hodge fills in in the midfield with speed going off. Put away by Sterling, only as far as Williams, and he's still got two men up with him. Here is Sheridan, and here is Hurst, can make it two! The inside of the upright. And that's how close Wednesday were to sealing the points, I fancy. If that had gone in, I don't think there'd have been much way back for Leeds in 12 minutes. David Hurst ruining his luck. Williams, Sheridan, he teed him up. And that was thumped in against the upright. Four minutes left and they've missed four chances. Chapman's header, here's Wallace and Strachan. And now McAllister arriving, here's the chance for Hodge. And Steve Hodge sweeps in his first goal for Leeds United. And that may well be good enough to win a point. It's been a long time coming, Strachan's header knocked up in the air and Steve Hodge only minutes after coming on in his first appearance as a substitute for Leeds United could well have rescued a point for them. It would indeed be an amazing transformation if Leeds were to get a winner, Hodge is in there again, Fairclough's in there, Wednesday still knocking it out and the ball trickles through to Chris Woods who falls on it so gratefully. Just beyond Francis, Sterling knocks it away from him. And the first Yorkshire First Division derby for more than two decades has ended all square. It's probably the right result, a lot of pressure from Leeds before Steve Hodge, just four minutes from time, won them a point after David Hurst had given Sheffield Wednesday the lead in the 48th minute. A lot of people would have been disappointed after the Sheffield Wednesday game, as were we. I mean, we didn't play as, as well that day as we would have liked. Some days you sit there and you think, we're not firing on all cylinders here. But having said that, you had to acknowledge, you know, we're playing a decent team as well, a team that would also do well that season. That game really brought it home to me, the. Uh, the advantage we would have at Ellen Road. I mean, the, the roar and the, the atmosphere was just fantastic. I think as the season progressed, that became more and more intense and I could, you could visually see it in players' eyes whether they could handle that uh, or not. Leeds had deserved their point, but had needed the change Wilkinson made in which to earn it. Four days later, they were heading south, all the way to the Dell to meet Southampton. You start the season and, and you have targets we want our first goal, we want our first home win or our first away win, our first away clean sheet, our first home clean sheet and so on. Um, to go there and beat them four, you know, there's a he heck of a lot of targets gone. Those objectives were achieved despite an injury to Chris Fairclough, which meant Mel Sterling coming on and John McClellan moving to centre-half. Gary's speed gave Lees the perfect send-off with that volley. On his return to the Dell, it was Rod Wallace who won a Leeds penalty from the challenge from Neil Ruddock. Almost needless to say, Gordon Strachan was spot on. 2-0. More controversy followed, Russell Osman was adjudged to a foul lead Chapman and once again Strachan was reliable as ever. The best was safe for last though, a thundering drive from Gary Speed. His second leads his fourth, proof of Wilco's strength in depth. I mean I was doing, I hate to praise myself, I was doing such a good job Mel was sub. So Mel had been fit and, and to be fair to hard you do your job you stay in the team. So Mel Sterling, although a good right back, and me technically not a natural right back, was keeping Mel out of the team. So then Chris got a clash of heads, I moved the centre back, Mel Sterling came in to play right back, as if we won 4 nil. I think I got some unusually uh, Southampton give out a man of the match for both teams. Usually sponsors only give to, to um, the home player, 
but I've got a cut glass from that game where they said I was man of the match. Um, and unusually, the reporter says, uh, and John McClellan done very well the move to centre back. And I thought, I've always played centre back. <laughs> so the Sunday paper said, he did very well to move from full back to centre back and cope. So it's just little things that stay in my mind. I think, well, no, I was a centre back, but I could play either side. A lot of the team, and in particular Gary Speed, who would be uh, an important part of that team, would have got on the bus that night and, and, and genuinely thought, actually, you know, I, I'm all right with this. I, I'm comfortable in this group. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not being picked with a view to my potential. I'm in here because because of what I can do and what I can give the team. Any visit to Old Trafford is a highlight of the season for Leeds fans, and Manchester United were aiming for the title, having not won it for 24 years. Like Leeds, they were also unbeaten. With Leeds improving all the time, this was always going to be a test of just how far they'd come. Chris Fairclough hadn't recovered from his knock at Southampton, so John McClellan was again partnered with Chris White. And Mel Sterling started for the first time all season. Gary McAllister passed a late fitness test. When you've got that rivalry, uh, you know, it's like a little derby. You know, you a rivalry, Man United at the time. Leeds United had a great side going back through the years. Uh, everybody wants to beat Leeds United. Uh, but, uh, yeah, rivalry is important and, you know, it's uh, who wants it the most. The pressure was evident from the start of a typical Roses match. The game, by the way, played in glorious sunshine with temperatures reaching 80 degrees. Leeds' early dominance showed when Tony Dorigo found Gary Speed down the left flank. His perfectly weighted cross picked out Lee Chapman and Peter Schmeichel was punished for misjudging the cross. When Paul Ince went off, Alex Ferguson was forced into a change. He brought on Ryan Giggs and Leeds rode their luck. With four minutes to go, United got their equaliser. Brian Robson broke free into the box. He set up Brian McClare. John Lukic made one fantastic save, but Robson was there to finish from close range. This had been a heroic performance, though, from Leeds. Almost a memorable victory. I've got a, a newspaper cuttings. Ryan Giggs came on as sub. And the paper said I was old enough to be his father. <laughs> I was concentrating on Ryan Giggs' youth and my end of my career. I think I said I'd have to see his mother first before he could come at the nap. Arsenal had won the title in two of the three previous seasons. They'd not made a good start to the season, but they were still regarded as the best team in England when four months after lifting the trophy, they headed to Ellen Road. That was more like a game of uh, chess, because obviously George Graham was very much into tactics and, and shapes of teams and hard-working teams. And Hard was into hard-working teams and shapes of teams, so um, I just remember that was a very uh, uh, tough game because they were as they, probably favourites to, to win the league. Leeds begin attacking the cop. Arsenal are in their gaudy new strip. That's the only way I think we can describe it. And, of course, regular visitors to this ground last season. The sides met on six occasions, four times in the FA Cup, and Arsenal didn't lose on any of those occasions. They drew here 2-2 in the league. And Leeds looking, first of all, through Chapman with the back heel. And now Sterland. And they have Mel Sterland back in the side to execute the longer throw-ins if they choose. Strachan cutting it back to McAllister, over the top of it he goes. Rodney Wallace gets the shot in on target. And although the linesman raised the flag, Referee wave play on. Rodney Wallace still looking for his first goal for Leeds, of course, since his move from Southampton. Well, Wallace is only a little fellow, but he got there, and now Chapman takes it on under pressure from Linigan, and he's done really well. Chapman and swerves the shot in. No more than a couple of feet wide. And those are the battling qualities of Lee Chapman that are appreciated by the Allen Road fans. He and Linigan in an almighty tussle, a real battle of heavyweights. Chapman came off best. He beat Seaman, but it went wide. And after 18 minutes, it's Leeds nil, Arsenal nil. Leeds in possession. With Dorigo, sprightly. Batty calling for it short. Here he is, David Batty might try his luck. 
be disappointed not to have hit the target. It's a well-known fact that he doesn't score goals. And I'm sure it's a record he wants to put straight. <laughs> and I think he's waving to the cop there because they were cheering the fact he had a strike on goal. Merson always looks dangerous. And Arsenal with plenty of men up in this attack. Dangerous cross here, and they could be in trouble, and Leeds indeed were in trouble. <coughs> Beautifully struck by Alan Smith, and Arsenal have the lead on 20 minutes. Alan Smith's fourth goal of the season, Winterburn cut it back, and Smith, with one sweep of the left foot, beat Lukic comprehensively. Arsenal had a lot of men forward, Smith could hardly have struck it better. 20 minutes gone, it's Leeds nil, Arsenal 1. <laughs> 21 players are in Arsenal's half and he's found speed inside the area, Gary Speed! Well, he really wellied that one, didn't he? But it flew over the top of the Arsenal crossbar, he wanted a corner, he didn't get one. Speed, who struck those two beauties at Southampton last week, looking to repeat his form at the Dell on the left foot. Plenty of power in it, but too much elevation. And some neat skills, you do have to admire the quality of the football, and Arsenal have shown several qualities there. And Michael Thomas is the man on the ball. There's McClellan who nudged it away, but it's back in towards Campbell, and a marvellous save from Lukic getting down to his left. Excellent stop by Lukic, he had to be so alert then. With Kevin Campbell, a powerful header of the ball, coming in to meet Dixon's cross. Well directed, and Lukic down to scramble it away. Merson tries to show a clean pair of heels to Batty. He does that, now he's got Sterland. Beats away his challenge as well. Excellent work from Merson, he now tees up Winterburn, and he's gone through! And a second goal for Alan Smith. And Arsenal really rock leads there with the quality of their attack. Much of it down to Paul Merson and executed with brutal efficiency by Alan Smith. No wonder he's laughing about it. Again, it's on the left foot. Merson had done so well. And then Winterburn, I think he was attempting a shot, and it went straight across and found the left boot of Smith. And it was too good for Lukic. There's Winterburn and Smith slides it in past Lukic, it's 2-0 for Arsenal. And that after 49 minutes. The lead's throw. Chapman tussling for it, so is Wallace here, and this will be a Leeds corner. So some encouragement for them with 25 minutes left. But they're two goals down. And Arsenal have been formidable tonight. Strachan takes it, Seaman tries to come, Speed does, Wallace beaten away, here's McAllister heading it into the net, but the whistle had already sounded, and it does not count. So some real mystery about this goal, Strachan's corner kick, now Gary Speed gets up, back heads it, and I think it's Lee Dixon's handball, referee Nixon has pointed to the spot, I think it's handball against Lee Dixon, the interesting thing is he hasn't sent him off. So Gary McAllister, a goal scorer in the midweek win here against Nottingham Forest, bitterly disappointed, it's going to be a Leeds penalty. Strachan has placed the ball on the spot, he felt that the goal should have been given to him in any event. But the referee had blown the whistle and Leeds are still complaining to Bob Nixon. The penalty had already been awarded. And Strachan, who converted two successfully at Southampton last week, has the chance to bring Leeds back into the game. Strachan versus Seaman. It's 2-1, he can smile now. The arms are raised, and it all worked out in the end for Leeds. They were hoping McAllister's header would count. It didn't. Strachan's little chip did. Cheekily taken. And after 66 minutes, Strachan puts Leeds back into it. They tried a little turn inside Winterburn, the fullback read it well. And Merson comes for Arsenal. And he's got a man running through the middle. This could be the third for Arsenal. 
Thomas was the man who'd got into the position, but he couldn't finish it off because Lukic again was alert. But Merson has been outstanding tonight for Arsenal. He fed Thomas with the perfect pass, and Lukic was very brave. No flick on, Merson away once more. Back from Dorigo to Batty. Strachan makes a run in behind the defender. Falls under the challenge and there was no foul. No foul and Strachan himself acknowledges that, which is good to see because some of the crowd were howling. Still uncertain as to who is going to come off here for Leeds. I think it's going to be Mel Sterland. It is. Sterland has started a game for the first time at home this season, replaced then by the other England international, Hodge, who scored a goal on his debut for Leeds against Sheffield Wednesday as a substitute. <laughs> Dorigo for Leeds, pepping it up by coming into Arsenal's half. Wallace has been darting around this half, but he falls under that tackle, and Arsenal break, and again they've got three men up. They do come so quickly. This is Campbell leading the thrust, going on the outside of McClellan, he's got Rowcastle behind him. Here's Rowcastle, the substitute, he can round it off. Lukic makes another excellent stop, and it's Strachan there to aid the clearance. Lukic has made three excellent stops tonight, and Rowcastle within a minute of coming on might well have scored here and wrapped up the points for Arsenal the back heel from Campbell opened the way for him he took his time eventually slices the shot in and a one-handed palm away by Lukic Strachan well he's found his way through to Hodge and he's wriggled his way past Linigan cuts it back Wallace checking it inside the area he tees up speed oh a terrific strike from speed and it's zoomed over the Arsenal crossbar. He struck two glorious goals last week, but tonight his arrow's just over the bar. And Leeds are going to bring on Wetherill. But not until this throw-in has been taken and the cross has come in. It's long. In goes McAllister. Here's Lee Chapman. The priceless boot of Lee Chapman restores it to status quo as a match and Leeds have fought back from two down and just as in the 86th minute against Sheffield Wednesday they scored an equaliser so they've got one here against Arsenal and it's that man Chapman who seems to relish playing against Arsenal. McAllister certainly played his part with the header and Chapman's lunging boot did the rest. 2-2. It had been a courageous fight back inspired by the goalkeeping of John Lukic. In the final minutes, Leeds were unlucky not to take all three points, missing a couple of very takeable chances. And Wilkinson's comment afterwards, his side had ridden their luck, but despite that, had played some tremendous football.